Hello to everyone who's just joining. Uh, this is the Raw Crystal Conference panel. I am your host, Jack Thorne, otherwise uh, known as One True Free on the internet, the Twitters, the Instagrams, the GitHubs. And um, I'm also the host of the Chicago Crystal podcast, um, which is on break, but we are coming back after this conference, maybe in the new year. Uh, that is my first and only plug for that. Um, during uh, this panel discussion. And we have some interesting sections for you. One is uh, on the ecosystem and the community and the other one is on kind of crystal design and uh, running crystal in production. And since those were the two most requested breakout groups, I feel like uh, we're kind of um, in line with where people's interests are. Um, and uh, a little bit of housekeeping, we're gonna jump into this, but um, just to let everyone know, we will be using the Q&A feature on Zoom to try to take questions from the community. I have a list of uh, pre-baked questions and things like that. And it might be a little bit difficult jumping between uh, kind of those questions and the QA questions on Zoom, but I'm gonna do my best because I think it's really cool to, to kind of get some input um, from the community and uh, maybe um, talk about some things that, that I haven't thought about and that, you know, that would be good for everyone to hear. Um, so instead of just walking down a uh, list of names of the panelists, I figured I'd introduce them by asking them uh, a few questions. And um, if they would not mind, if you could tell us uh, your name, um, your job or how people might know you in the community, and then uh, what Crystal is to you in uh, three words, uh, please no more. And um, if uh, Steven wouldn't mind kicking us off and uh, if people can jump in afterwards or I can kind of walk down the list. Good day, all. Um, so I am S. Takach on GitHub. Uh, I created Spider Gazelle and work for a company called Place Tech. We're, and our software is all open source as well. So I think GitHub slash Place OS uh, is all open source crystal. Um, and Crystal in three words, uh, <laughs> epic, fast, uh, beautiful. Epic, fast, and beautiful. Love it. Love it. And uh, Sergey, would you mind jumping in? Yeah. Uh, hey, guys. Um, my name is Sergey Kuznetsov, and uh, I am also, I have my own consulting company where I provide uh, different services. So I'd say, like, I am IT erudit. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm the rest of my company name. And yes, I'm IT <laughs> generalist where I'm helping companies everything like uh, architecture, like security, cloud migration, uh, helping uh, companies save on the clouds and all the stuff because most of the companies doesn't know how to do it. That's what I do. And as of the crystal, as I said, it will be like extremely elegant and fast. <laughs> awesome, awesome. That works extremely elegant and fast. Extremely elegant. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think and is, is a good, uh, uh, good one. And to just connect, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about Matthew? Do you mind jumping in? Yeah, sure. So by day, I'm a Rails full stack dev, uh, pretty standard uh, web stuff is what I do. But uh, in my spare time, I'm a core member of the Lucky team. So I, I work on the Lucky framework and all of the other libraries. Uh, for three words, if you just don't count one of them, uh, I would say it's low bar to entry. Nice, nice. I like that. And um, yeah, that's correct. That's yeah. And I forgot what I and I forgot like what my achievements was at the Crystal team. Uh, not much actually. I just helped to uh, I just helped to make the bugger work. Yep, yep. Um, Kingsley. Hi, hi. Good to be here. So um, yeah, some of you may know me from um, my project uh, Accentro, formerly City Chain Blockchain Project. Um, so I've been working on that in my spare time, night and day. So uh, if I look a bit tired, it's because <laughs> we've just uh, launched our main net, so it's live now, um, purely written in Crystal, and uh, all of the extra libraries that go with it, all written in Crystal, um, and some of the libraries written in Mint, which is written in Crystal, so you can count that as <laughs> part of the Crystal ecosystem. Um, yeah, so I'm a, a programmer by um, profession, mostly Scala these days for a long, long time. I consider myself a veteran now. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm glad to see this conference and uh, thanks for inviting me. Uh, do you have um, three words for Crystal? I do. So I'd say niche, effective, but a little bit unusual. I like that. That's <laughs> fun. 
And then, uh, Jeremy, would you mind uh, rounding us off? Yeah, sure. Uh, Jeremy, uh, you can see me on GitHub, uh, Jay Warching. Uh, I'm usually around on the, the lucky side of things, one of the uh, core contributors on the Lucky project. Uh, I do have a couple of other crystal projects like SiteMapper, uh, Fez, that I don't really update as much, just I don't use them uh, nearly. Well, actually, I use the SiteMapper quite a bit, but not really the Fez. Um, as far as three words uh, for crystal, maybe um, crystal is amazing. <laughs> crystal <laughs> is amazing. You know, that really works. I like it. Um, just for time's sake, I'm going to kind of cut over some of the other uh, intro kind of sections because we got started a little late. We're going to be entering the section for the ecosystem in the community. Um, if you do have questions, you can try to put them in the Q&A feature of Zoom, and I will be trying to read that. But just to kick it off, um, I'm really interested in origin stories, and I think the community is, is pretty cool, and the ecosystem is pretty interesting. Does anyone want to share uh, how they first discovered Crystal and discovered the Crystal ecosystem? And uh, we don't have to go in order, and not everyone has to contribute but if you do have a story i'd love to hear it i've certainly got a story yeah so uh i came from ruby um a long time ago and i was looking for more performance in one of my uh, projects and i happened to catch um a presentation in, in a rubyconf about writing extensions in this d language I thought, wow, this looks cool. It looks much easier than C. I'll, I'll give it a go. So I started writing D. I sort of got into D. Then one of my friends said, hey, have you checked out Crystal? Um, it's like Ruby, and that would get around all your issues with speed. And I was like, oh, no, I'll, I'll check it out. So um, I went to have a look at it. I think it wasn't quite ready at that time. Um, so I thought, oh, I'll bookmark it. And then I came back, I think it was maybe like a year or two later. And wow, it had totally changed. Like this ecosystem had arrived. There was libraries, like everything um, didn't have to be written from scratch anymore. Cause that was one of the main issues for me is picking it up. Like I didn't want to have to rewrite all my Ruby <laughs> uh, libraries <laughs> in, in Crystal. Um, and, but yeah, so that's how I got into it. Just kind of by accident, really. Someone mentioned it, otherwise I don't think I would have found it. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, coincidental uh, kind of discovery of Crystal. Yeah, I think I discovered it through uh, Sidekick. Um, yeah. I can't remember who the creative Sidekick is, but... Mike Person? I follow him on Twitter. Yeah, that's it, Mike Person, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, went, then looked at the blog and, and uh, Asterat was chatting to me, which was fun. Um, but yeah, awesome. Uh, for me, it was uh, quite interesting. It's kind of the same. Like, in, like I, I started to read the D language. I really liked it. It, it was it was much nicer than C plus plus, and uh, no any pain in that with uh, the memory location and control. And then, like after some time, I was figured out. Crystal, I cannot remember how I found it. I just found it and I just like realized, wow, that's exactly what I like because I'm the Ruby developer, like Ruby on Rails developer since 2005, and I did lots of the big projects on Ruby, uh, Ruby on Rails, and um, I thought like you know like I would love to have something like language uh, like Ruby, but the speed like C, C++, and D. And so, like when I saw the crystal, I just like fell in love, and I tried to plan what to do with it, like you know, in production. And uh, at the moment when I decided to work on work on it, I just figured out that I usually work with the debuggers, and if like, the debugger doesn't work for me, it will be really tough to develop all this stuff. So I, I decided <laughs> to give give it a try and fix the debugger first. Nice. That's how I ended up with the crystal. And uh, now we have like you know the, the company, and I will like I'm working with so as an solution architect for them uh you, you, you know Joe, jack now knows about them Vlad yeah. and uh, dima so they already like built uh, uh the production uh, uh or you know the, the you know the production ready project for one of their customers in, in australia and they're doing quite well so uh maybe recently we will do that video with you 
Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> and, you know, like the, the, the yeah. interview. So you, you can talk with all of them and uh, we can directly talk about it. Yep. There are uh, plans in the works for more podcasts. Um, uh, yeah. So just, you know, for time and, and moving things along, uh, I'm going to move to the next question. And if anyone wants to jump in on, on previous questions, they're more than welcome to. But um, so I, I kind of have seen this issue or not issue, but just desire in the Chris community since I've joined, which is to make an interface layer or to make a um, kind of trans, like transpiling layer from Ruby to Crystal and Crystal to Ruby. There have been a few GIFs that I've seen, projects I've seen, attempts I've seen that have, have really kind of either not been completed or have been abandoned. Um, I'm just kind of curious what uh, your guys' thoughts are in the um, kind of Ruby to Crystal uh, integration layers and where they fit in the ecosystem or the community. You know, do we need them or are they uh, not mature enough yet? Um, yeah, you know, I, I've seen a lot of those things kind of over the years in different languages. There was a project that did um, sort of a transpile PHP to Ruby and Ruby to PHP. <laughs> and, you know, you get, uh, oh, let's turn uh, C sharp into JavaScript and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. I, I think Java the concept. Sharp you know, of going between them is fine and all, but in reality, even though the, the syntax is similar between Crystal and Ruby, I don't really think that we need a sort of, hey, let me just go ahead and start shoving everything over because when you get into Crystal, you start thinking about how things are structured differently. Yeah. Right, yeah. in Ruby with yeah. all the metaprogramming yeah. stuff, you're like, Oh, I'll just call dot send on some private method and send us <laughs> in. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. And you can't think that same way in Crystal. So a lot of that code, I don't think, would translate too well. But uh, you know what? I think maybe like uh, partial uh, transfer, uh, transpiling is good. So if you don't use all that like metaprogramming stuff, like send or like uh, like all that uh, like evaluation stuff, then you can get some classes and just transpile them to the uh, to the crystal, which is, uh, saves you a tremendous amount of time. Mm -hmm. uh, so that means like you know not complete uh, transpiling, but like partial transpiling. So which will help you to, to save it. I even though at some moment I want to build that, and I even like you know register the main like crystallizer.org <laughs> just yeah. for this kind of stuff you know that reminds me of uh crystal lib a little bit like just a, a, a really good bootstrap like um, yeah. for people yeah. who don't know crystal lib is uh takes c libraries and and helps you um create it. Crystal. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think that's very useful that's one of the most useful things i've done especially with uh the blockchain because there's a lot of low level c libraries that i had to wrap to make work and uh, I think uh, Jeremy's right in terms of uh, Ruby. You really have a different mindset when you start programming Crystal. Because I thought that mm -hmm. at first, oh, it's just like uh, Ruby, but it's actually not really, not when you really start programming. <laughs> Yeah. But it's easier for Ruby, so it's easier to read, like, you know, that's why, like, your performance, uh, like, the development much faster uh, than in other languages, like C, C++, or even, like, the same Rust, and uh, I don't, like, don't really like Rust and uh, Golang. I know them, but I don't like them. But <laughs> when I program in Crystal, I enjoy it. I really enjoy it, because, first of all, it's completely object-oriented, and I can say, like, two dot days dot from now, and it yeah. will just work. Yeah, I agree. I'm actually uh, going to kind of move us along just to keep timing in mind. Um, but I really like the discussion. I think it's a very fascinating part of the ecosystem. And it just it, it continually comes back up. It's the uh, evergreen question, in some ways. Um, so the next thing I'm really interested about is like, historically, I think certain projects have been successful in Crystal. And I think that uh, they probably... Um, I'm not sure if the ecosystem is filling out, but I'm not sure that those are going, like new projects will be as successful uh, in those spaces. But what makes a successful project in Crystal? Like what has made a successful project or what will make a successful project if someone's looking to start something? And um, I'm going to kind of kick it off with uh, Matthew just to kind of rounding out all the panelists. Yeah, yeah. I, this has definitely been something that's on my mind a lot recently because... I, as a developer, I'm the person who just wants to sit and program. Uh, but I mean, if you heard Jeremy's talk earlier, you know, our, in Lucky, our first, uh, our most important thing in Lucky is the community. And it's so much more than just the code. In, in, in fact, you know, a lot of these projects that I'm seeing lately uh, succeed 
are almost in spite of the code. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a wonder that the, the code works, but it's really the community that's uh, carrying it along. So uh, I am really thinking a lot more recently about writing and um, mm -hmm. that, that seems to have a big, make a big deal on like confidence coming in because if you think about uh, something that comes up a lot in Lucky is this concept of image uploading. You know, everybody yeah. who's written a web app eventually needs to upload images. And somebody comes into Lucky and asks about that. And we don't really have anything to point them to. Uh, but that doesn't mean the solution is any more complicated than Rails. It's just Rails has 50 million articles out there uh, that can give confidence. And, and mm -hmm. I, I think that confidence is what really helps these communities succeed, no matter what the code is. Yeah. That's actually a really good point. I hadn't thought about that. Um, Steven, do you have a, any ideas on what makes a project uh, successful in the Crystal ecosystem? Um, well, I think if it works, that probably helps. Um, <laughs> I mean, so I've, I guess I haven't really been focused on the ecosystem as much as others maybe. Okay. Uh, just because of the company that I work for actually like dog foods, all the code we're writing. Um, so we're using it in production and um, hopefully that inspires confidence in others. Um, but uh, I guess if you just put it out there and if people use it and like it, then that's awesome. Awesome. I've got a few thoughts on that as well, actually. Um, oh yeah, go. Some of the things that uh, sort of make it more difficult is um, if there's a lack of documentation or a lack of good documentation. So I think the more documentation you have, the more successful it is because people will be able to get started more quickly. Secondly as well is um, reacting to changes. So when there's a new version of Crystal, if the maintainer updates the code quickly to support, um, I think that's a, a mark that it's an active project. And people like active projects. Your project's not active there's a little bit of hesitancy to use it. It's like, well, you know, maybe this mm -hmm. is not supported. Um, and then lastly is just having community around it. So answering questions, um, taking um, various feedback in issues, addressing issues. If a project does all of that, I think it, it would be successful regardless of the uh, language or ecosystem. Sounds good. I think uh, we've gotten, I, th I totally agree with you. Uh, since we've kind of gotten three little three takes on it, I'm gonna just move us forward to hopefully cover some some more ground. And um, we're kind of running out of time for the for the ecosystem section, but I just love this question, so we're gonna do it. Which is, what is your uh, most favorite project in Crystal that you either have no use for or just would never use in production? <laughs> I don't know. Ooh, that's a that's a tough one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because usually, like, because we 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 quite small, like a community, we don't make the projects which will be not useful, right? Uh, so because we like initially you building the projects which you, which you will scratch your itch, and only then you can so start to experiment and doing some other stuff. That's why I don't even know like which project yeah. can be like that. Well, I can give I, one of my examples, which is Cryboy, which is a an a game Game Boy emulator written in Crystal. And oh, I think I that's see. super cool. I, I'd have no, no specific use for it in production. I, I don't think anyone's going to make a B2B app of Game Boy emulators, but it's really cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, uh, was going to go down the route of the, the games uh, too. I started looking at the uh, SDL shard uh, a while back, even contributed a bit to it just so I could start working on a video game framework. So I actually have a mini game framework um, that I've written a few small games in uh, called Chrono. And uh, I mean, it doesn't work that great. So I would never throw any indie games up on Steam with it. But, you know, just the idea of being able to write a tiny little game just to pass the time, whatever, in Crystal yeah. is, is pretty fun. I, I think that um, the Crystal OS that exists. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't installed it, but I've looked at that website, the, the Git repo, so many times and been like, how the hell? Like, <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. 
I wrote I wrote OSs when I was at school, like a few like real mode and I guess one protected mode in C plus plus. And mm. but to get it to uh, we actually did uh, like try and auth. I don't know if you heard about the try and auth back in the early two thousands. I was helping them with that. So it was the operating system built on C plus plus. That was really? fun. <laughs> Yeah, oh, try and often I was just giving them lots of the ideas, which actually after that was implemented in some other stuff. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, like cool. transpiling the code and like in a Java, you know, the, the, the binary code. Yeah, was well, awesome. was fun. Well, we've we've run way over time for that, but I, I love the discussion about the ecosystem and the and the shards. We're gonna head into uh, kind of running Crystal in production, and um, if anyone has some questions they want to throw in the Q and A, uh, please do. I'm, I have it open, but I haven't seen any in there, so. Uh, yeah, just let me know. Um, so in uh, talking about kind of crystal design and production, what is uh, your the, the feature that you most wanted to get into the 1.0 release that you either believe has made it in or will make it in? For me, I think it's the um, cross uh, compilation stuff. Yeah, whoa, yeah. <laughs> we, we tried several times and I, I know I've asked um, on like the forums and the chat rooms and stuff like that on how to get that to work. We never got mm -hmm. that to work, so uh, I, I did work uh, like for for the Raspberry Pi four. Like it, it, it was working for me. For the so, yeah, the cross compilation stuff. Yeah, like uh, on Raspberry Pi four. So like I had like eight gig, eight gig of RAM. So I was able to compile and it was working. And uh, I'm just sometimes I'm playing with it, like you know, on, on my RPA four. Yeah, I think that's one of the, the things for me, because um, uh, if we could get cross compilation to work, then it would simplify our deployment process. Right now, for us to deploy a uh, Lucky app, we actually boot Docker locally, build mm -hmm. on that Docker container to create our zip mm -hmm. file, and then we ship the zip file up to Elastic Beanstalk, um, which is also running Docker. So we're essentially going mm -hmm. Docker to Docker but if we could build it like locally on the Mac or whatever, and then ship that up, that would make things so much easier. Oh, locally, sorry. Like I like because what I did, I did like Bootstrap, and then I moved to the RPI and did all the stuff over there. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I mean, we use Build X to build ARM images using Docker, which you can do on your Mac, um, and I guess the new Macs will do ARM natively. Oh, interesting. Has anyone tried that? Does anyone even have one yet? <laughs> All nope. right, so we're gonna jump to the to the next one, and uh, um, this one I think is is really interesting. But Crystal um, has been influenced by many languages, and if you've read some of the pull requests or the RFCs, you'll see samples from Go and Rust and Java or other things like that. Um, but it's probably most heavily influenced by Ruby. I, that's mm -hmm. kind of unquestioning right now. What do you think are some of the positive and negative influences that have kind of come from the Ruby ecosystem? And uh, I'm going to kick it off by uh, calling on Matt to see if he has any thoughts. If not, you can just pass, but I figured I'd give you an opportunity. Uh, honestly, I, I, the, the thing that uh, I love the most about Crystal is that it's holding strong to object orientation. Yeah. Uh, there's a, I mean, the, the, the culture, the dev culture is going towards, you know, functional programming 24 seven. Uh, but uh, personally that just doesn't do that, do it for me. Uh, so, you know, making a class that I can understand is one of the biggest things I love about Crystal. Mm -hmm. yeah, I can't really think of anything. It's, it's, and it simplifies like you know reading the code so because it's become so clear and like you know it's easier to understand than when you when you see in other languages right so for me actually what I, what I, what I what I love in Ruby but what I miss in the crystal it's to have a then because I love to say like if blah 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 then and yeah. then it's like you know code and and that's what I miss in the crystal I love that stuff like you know uh, I I think the one thing for me it's probably pretty obscure and probably no one else agrees with me but. I um I really don't like the hash for the comment. I really would prefer like a double slash. It's just because I use a Mac and it's much harder to do the comment. Interesting. Um, so that's <laughs> that's one of the things <laughs> that gets me. <laughs> no, for me it's a game. Yeah. yeah the, the the language itself, the object oriented is the, like in the, the object oriented and Ruby like style 
for the crystal is a must. So that's what actually we're making that unique. And if all, so as you know, we have a celebrity like uh, recently who joined uh, us. It's uh, Bruce Perrins, who mm-hmm. is uh, like selected this language for his own projects, and he is doing great. I think the our only issue I see is uh, our like macro system, which is uh, really un uh, like uh, undocumented, uh, undocumented, and it's, it's painful to write in that, yes. but it's very powerful. Yeah. Like if you can make like a really good tutorials around it, how to use it, I think you will like it will skyrocket. And also, yeah. like, because of that, Bruce Perrins, like, he's quite celebrity, and he may help us to bootstrap our like you know the popularity of the crystal language. Yeah, I hope that he will help us. I this week was writing a project um, where I was heavily utilizing the macro language, and uh, I, the documentation is 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 a hard part. I don't want to. I don't want to speak to for, as a panelist, so I'm going to move this along and also talking about the macro system. Um, I find it to be extremely powerful and extremely fun and way more flexible than I ever thought. I've written a few DSLs that are that just blow me away that Crystal's able to do some of the things it does. What is your most favorite feature that you've implemented with the Crystal macro system? Uh, lucky. (laughs) (laughs) All right. That's like my mic drop, you know. (laughs) You open up that and it's just macros. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I I don't use macros too much, but I did create one project that people think is a bit like strange. And it's um, creating, it's a test framework where you write your tests in HTML and then it uh, parses them and turns them into like tests that run. And I had to use a lot of macro behind the back there to tally up the difference between the HTML and the code. Um, it was quite interesting. I don't think anyone uses it or would want to, but. <laughs> <laughs> so we are running a little over and uh, in, in a fashionable sense, we're going to be fashionably late just a little bit. But um, if everyone wouldn't <laughs> mind uh, sharing one last thing, which is our closing question, if you could have one feature request to make it into Crystal 2.0 in 2021 or 2022, whenever it gets released, uh, what would it be and um, why? And for this, I'm actually just going to go through kind of our order again. So Stephen, if you wouldn't mind kicking us off. Not much time to think about that. I mean, I, I'm actually really happy with how Crystal is currently. <laughs> um, like, it's, I don't know, it's been revolutionary for, for my life. Uh, awesome. In terms of coding. Um, yeah, I mean, that's fine. I guess building out the standard library a bit more, maybe. Oh, actually, I do have one. Um, uh, nurseries. Ah. Um, so Johan was, uh, I think, has a pull request on Crystal somewhere, um, implementing that, and it's it's all about uh, the, like handling fibers in a really nice way and being able yeah. to they shut them down when they're not needed anymore. So if you've got, I don't know, you're processing something and doing a whole lot of async work, and then for some reason you don't need to do that work anymore, you can cancel the fibers mid whatever um, yeah. and, and stop processing needlessly. Uh, I mean, they do a lot more, but it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. Awesome. Uh, Sergey, what would you have in Crystal 2.0 in 2022? I would love to have ARC. Uh, like automatic reference counting and uh, actually to the ability to select uh, garbage collection or arc that's oh. what i would love to have because in that case for some tasks it will be perfect to have arc for some t- tasks it will be perfect to have uh, garbage collection yep yep uh matthew what would you have in crystal 2.0 in 2022 yeah uh i'm gonna say two things just because i can uh <laughs> but i would love for crystal to own the the language server protocol uh and really invest a lot of effort into that because uh, I think we need it. But beyond that, I would really, I'm a, I love TDD. So I would love for the specs uh, module to be more robust or at least have better integration libraries for like mocking and all of that stuff because uh, I really miss a lot of those things when I'm writing crystal specs. 
Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Kingsley, what would you like to have in Crystal 2.0 in 2022? Great. Great. Yeah. There's a couple of things actually. First thing is I'd really like uh, better crypto support, like all the crypto to be unified um, and supported a bit better. Um, secondly, I really would like um, compilation to uh, uh, JavaScript so I can write in uh, uh, <laughs> Crystal and have magic JavaScript come out the other end. And yeah. And finally, an IDE, I really would That's like. That's possible. Um, <laughs> very very good um and then to to finish us off jeremy what would you like in crystal 2.0 in 2022 i'd love to see an interpreter uh and actually i think a postmodern was actually uh posting in one of the the tracks on um discord but if we look at um a few other compiled languages like julia for example which is on llvm they have an interpreter built in, which gives them the ability to have a full REPL. So mm -hmm. uh, not something like ICR where it's doing um, sort of an incremental compilation or whatever, but you would need a full interpreter to be able to not have to compile in between takes. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I know like an Elixir, for example, how there's the, it's been a while since I've touched Elixir, but there's like two file extensions and they do different things. And I think one of them is for like an interpreted mode versus a compiled mode or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it'd be kind of cool to have Crystal where it's like, hey, I understand that I'm gonna take a speed hit and maybe a type safety hit by not being compiled, mm -hmm. but I wanna run this as if I was running it in interpreted mode and then yep. also compiled mode. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I had some questions about the uh, type inference, but uh, we had too much fun and we didn't get to them. <laughs> so um, I'm going to read us out. Uh, thank you um, to Rock Crystal for uh, allow like allowing us to have this panel. And um, thank you to all the panelists, some of which really stepped up when uh, some scheduling got a little bit weird. And I, I really do appreciate it. And thank you so much for everyone that was able to come and join the panel. And um, we are sorry for going a little over, but I'm going to... Uh, um, hand this back and uh, I don't even know how to hand control off. So if someone could take control back, that'd be great. And um, thank you so much for allowing us to have the panel and thank you so much to all the panelists.